Hey guys, so we have an unboxing of the most exciting phone this year, the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 2 5G. Now I'm not sure if it's going to be worth spending 2000 bucks on, but that's what we're going to find out. Alright, so pretty nice packaging. And this right here is indented. Also be doing a quick comparison versus the Galaxy Fold 1 and the Note 20 Ultra. Once again, really nice presentation. So this is gonna unfold, change the shape of the future. We have a pretty big pamphlet. So just your books and so this is your books and SIM card ejector. We also got your care instruction because uh, this was a big problem with the original. And this is actually to fold, so I'm gonna put that down. We got premier service because there's a pretty good chance it's gonna break. And we have a wall charger. That's a quick charge. Nothing in here. And a Type-C cable. So honestly guys, Samsung is, they're shipping a lot less than they used to. Uh, no free headphones or even a free case of it. It's a great presentation, but they're really only giving us the bare minimum for the accessories. But hey guys, that aside, let's go check out the phone. Yeah, so let's go over the warnings real quick. So don't press the screen or the front camera lens with something hard or sharp. When folding the device, make sure you don't have any coins or cards in between it. Uh, the device is definitely not waterproof or dustproof. So no water for it. Yes, yeah, so this one really important, don't remove the screen protector. Um, because that one obviously broke a lot of folds last year. And last, this is uh, the device contains magnets. Um, yeah guys, so whenever I put even like a paper clip near any of these fold phones, they always just become attached to it. So, yeah guys, again, pretty similar to last year. Yeah, so first thoughts, it looks and feels pretty nice, but I think it's probably still going to be pretty bulky folded. Uh, similar to last year's candy bar phone, the Fold 1. But yeah, let's go powered on. And I'll be testing that out in a few seconds. All right guys, so I'm gonna put in my info and I'll be back in a few. All right guys, so I've been using the phone for the past few days and I do have some pretty strong thoughts on it, but we'll go over the specs first and we'll also do the first fold. All right, so on the side here, we have the fingerprint. Now on the front, we have a 6.2 inch screen display 
and also a 1080p camera. Now when you unfold it, you have a 7.6 inch screen display and again a 1080p camera. Now this screen is 120 hertz and both are OLED. On the back we have a triple camera setup that includes a standard, a telephoto, and a wide angle. Now for the internals, so the phone has a latest Snapdragon 865 Plus version and 12GB of RAM, so of course game is going to be very smooth on it. You also have either a quarter or half a terabyte of internal storage, but no micro SD card support. The phone also has a 4500 capacity battery and USB-C at the bottom. The phone also has wireless charging and 5G, but it is not waterproof and you don't have a headphone jack. The phone ships in three colors and is available on most carriers. And once again, it costs 2000 bucks. The phone also has dual speakers. Subway Dreams, Dan, no copyright. Definitely pretty good quality. Now this is not going to be a full review, but there are some major positives and some major negatives. So let's do a comparison versus the Fold 1. Alright, so first of all I like about it. Now the fingerprint's a lot better. On the original it's separate from the power, so you have to press the power and then the fingerprint. Well, for the two, it is combined. It's really simple to unlock it. Something else is that the display is much larger. So, I was really not a fan of the original. Yeah, I mean, really guys, look at this <laughs> uh, ridiculous small screen. This just looks so much better. It actually looks like a flagship. Uh, really guys, for the original I did not like using it. And when you unfold them... Once again, the two just works so much better. Not a fan of that notch right there. Now, one more big upgrade... ...is the hinge. So, this is harder to demo, but for the original, the hinge is not sturdy for the original. So, if you go like this, you can't really adjust the position for it. So, you guys see, I mean, it's really just, just this position, and it's not sturdy. Now, for the two... It has a lot of flexibility. So once again, the hinge is a huge upgrade. I also really like how both these phones are top of the line specs. So not like the recent Razer or the Microsoft Duo. Uh, you know guys, I mean if I'm paying 1500 to over $2,000 for a foldable, then I definitely want the best specs. Now for what I don't like. So I mentioned that the original is like a candy bar, but this is like an XL candy bar. As you guys see, oh yeah, and so both these uh, have magnets. But yeah, you guys see right here. So... So yeah, when folded, the phone feels a lot larger.
Next is an L20 Ultra. This is, of course, a lot thicker. I don't really like the big hinge on the side. Yeah, obviously I have a lot more real estate here when unfolded. But when folded, I still prefer the note. Now the note is already a pretty large phone. But side by side here, guys, I mean, this is, the fold is much thicker. So yeah, I mean, personal thoughts of us choosing between them. Dan, I would choose the Note. And of course, this also has better cameras. Stay tuned for the full comparison. Now, having a large screen like this is great for a lot of stuff. Including split screen or stuff like this. But that said, I actually don't like it for gaming. I'm not a fan of the screen protector on it, and it just feels like I have to be really careful with it, so I don't want to be scratching with my fingernail and other stuff like that, which is actually something you end up doing a lot with the side of your fingernails. It feels like it slows me down a lot. That said, this could just be a learning curve, so stay tuned for my full review. Now the phone is also not just a magnet, it's also a fingerprint magnet. Had to keep wiping it down during the video. And the aspect ratio is also not good for a lot of media. Most media is, of course, either 21 by 9 or 16 by 9. And it doesn't even work. So if you go like this, then you can't even zoom. But it is at least pretty good for reading comments. Alright, so my final first thoughts for it. Now, once again, guys, this is really awesome tech. And it's probably the best foldable phone out there. I mean, it's not really saying much, but I do think it's the best foldable. But for the most part, the tech is still way too early and way too expensive to recommend. It's a lot easier to recommend the Note or most other Androids. Alright guys, so thanks for watching and check out the next video.